Hi, Professor Pulver here. I think you can notice that I, I, I'm amongst the flowers here and, and I, have, I have my purple tie on, my cream colored jacket. And we're going to talk about feminist perspective and traditionally this might not be something that males even get to wear to dress in flowers and to surround themselves with flowers. We're going to talk about some of these stereotypes as we look at this particular presentation. The interesting thing is back in the 1970s I used to wear a yellow sport coat with a yellow paisley tie. So at certain points you can get away with certain things that are thought to be a little more on the gentle or feminine side. Now the feminist perspective is usually not thought of as a sociological theory or perspective, but rather many people think it is more like a subset of the conflict theory because it does deal with conflict, of course. A way of defining the feminist perspective is a view that sees life and human experience from the standpoint of women. It promotes equality for the sexes and is opposed to patriarchy and sexism. One of the really important things that feminist theory gives to, to us, both as females and males, is this idea that society itself, or even the cultures we are in, take a large role in defining how we think of ourselves, how we act, and what roles we play. And this is based greatly upon which gender we are. Feminists are concerned about this because they feel, of course, that this has caused limitations for females. But note also that these limitations flow to the males also. An interesting result of females focusing on disadvantages for themselves and pointing them out to the society is that males likewise have found inequalities and disadvantages in their roles, expectations and treatment that has turned into a men's movement, all of which has brought a sense that both sexes are fighting for things that they believe are reducing their quality of life and their privileges. Continuing on now with the feminist views, feminism seeks to end laws and cultural norms that limit the income and the education, occupational opportunities for women. Feminism supports the right of females to control their own sexuality and their rep reproduction. They also take a position that men may not want to hear about when they say that society is a place where men dominate women. Further in this view, social order is maintained through oppression, where men maintain their dominance over women. We have some phrases that we might use when we look through the lens of the feminist theory. Phrases like the glass ceiling, where women seem to only have a certain level or place where they can rise to in an organization. And even though it looks like they could go higher, they hit the glass ceiling they cannot go any higher. And that is one of the things, of course, that laws of equality are trying to get rid of. We also have a concern in this view about what we call vertical relationships. A vertical relationship is a type in which one person feels that they are superior to or in charge of another. And this sometimes happens in families when strict ideas of patriarchy are adhered to. Some women get the idea that it's a man's world, honey. We play roles in relationships with each other, which was somewhat addressed, addressed in an old Bob Seger song where the lyrics go like this. I used you, you used me. This is where we are using another person to make things best for ourselves, or to get our needs met, or to get what we want. One of the other realities that happens, which this viewpoint is keenly aware of, is that because one person is doing what they are doing, the other person gets to do what they want to do. An example of this is because a female is willing to engage herself primarily in child care when there are children in the home, the man is allowed or enabled to go out and be in the workplace and work on the job. 
because she is willing to be with the kids, he may be able to go out and do his bowling league or be with other people. It is an arrangement which is sustained by norms in society or in cultures. Likewise, because the man is willing to go out and become the major breadwinner, this may allow the female more choices in certain areas, as in nurturing children, developing her talents and interests further, and making community contributions. One of the biggest issues females have had, though, is objectification of their bodies. They are objects to be lusted after, whistled at, howled at, and the receivers of catcalls and everything else. Probably there is hardly any woman who has not been exposed in some way to feeling like she is the object of desire or the object of lust. As theorists are concerned about roles and how these roles have made it so that women historically have tended, tended to be more secretaries, librarians, elementary school teachers, nurses, and so on. These are viewed as subordinate roles rather than leadership roles. Then we would find that engineers, mathematicians, CEOs, doctors and lawyers, and bosses were traditionally males. So there is a concern about an imbalance that, we may, that might exist in opportunity when it comes to men and women, when you compare them. But when you look at this, can you kind of see that this is really looking a lot like conflict theory. It is just couched in the relationship between men and women. Go back and look at conflict theory ideas. And make your own comparison. The ideas expressed in this presentation lead us to question what it is that makes another person unequal to someone else. Is it tasks performed which creates inequality? Is it lack of respect? Is it the manner in which we speak to one another? Is it only in the public arena that the greatest power is manifest? Is there power in nurturance? Which gender has which powers? These and other questions should be a part of our inquiry into the nature of gender roles, and a good sociology class will explore these in depth. See you next time.